Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and I'm super excited today to share this set with you. This is a set I designed using the Bella B and Show Me Korea Swanky Nail Polish Collection. It is a gorgeous set of glitter gel polishes. It was sent to me by Sweetie Nail Supply. They had reached out after seeing one of my videos and asked if they could send me some products to try out. I have been ordering from Sweetie Nail Supply for about a year now, and so of course I said yes. And this is the design I came up with. I'm really proud of how this turned out. I handmade all of the charms that you see here, like the flower, the wand, and the heart using wire. So if you would like to see how I do this and do the chrome detailing, then stick around. So here is that Bella B Swanky collection. I love this. It is so pretty and glittery. It comes in a variety of different colors. I decided to use color number 58. In hindsight, I think I should have used this color here, which is number 59. It is just a bit more of a brighter pink, but in my head, I was trying to match it to the doughy nude that I had wanted to use as kind of the base for the set. Again, I think if I make this in the future, I would go with that brighter pink, but all of these shades are gorgeous. They are available for sale individually as well as a whole collection on the Sweetie Nail Supply website. I will go ahead and link that down below. I do have an affiliate code, so if you'd like to order and support me, you can use the code GETPRESSED for 10% off, and I do get a commission from that. So thank you so much to everyone who has used the code. They also sent me these gorgeous almond tips. These are the Sarah Friends almond tension tips, and they have a really pretty shape. I was testing them out here, but ultimately I think I wanted them a little bit longer for what I had in mind because some of the charms I was going to make were going to be quite large. So I go with my Apre Gel X Long Almond Tips. These are new to me. Um, I just recently picked up some of the Apre Tips and so far I like them. I do really like this long almond shape. It just gives me a little bit more room to work with when it comes to this specific design. But I will definitely be going back to those Sarah Friends nail tips for future designs just because they also have a really pretty shape. They just weren't quite as long as I had needed for my purposes here. So after I pick out all of my nail tips, I put my gloves back on. Please make sure that when you are working with gel that you're covering your hands if it has HEMA or any other products that might cause some sort of allergic reaction and do your research. Here I am just rubbing down all the nail tips with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to make sure any fuzzies are done away with. And then I go in with my Apre primer and just buff out that surface. You can use a buffing block to do this. I prefer to do it with a primer just because I think it's cleaner. You don't have to then go back in again with rubbing alcohol and wipe away any dust. And then I'm using the Yogo Zombie Base Gel. This is a really nice thick gel, also sent to me by Sweetie Nail Supply, but something that I had been wanting to try on my own. I go in with a layer here just to make sure that these nails are nice and sturdy. I always like adding a thicker base gel if I'm not going to be doing too many layers of colored gel or art. That way I can ensure that the nails have good structure. I'm using the Doughy Nudie Pink by Nail Bio for this set because it was quite a sheer nude pink. I needed a sheer buildable color for the middle finger and the design I had in mind. However, I will say, if you're going to get either of these products, please note that the Doughy and the Yogo Zombie Base Gel, they don't seem to play well together. You can see here that it kind of pulls away the Doughy polish from that base gel, which happens. It's just a difference in brand. I've had this happen to me with the Beatles gel polish and other Korean brands. It really just depends on the formulation of the products you're using. So. A lot of people do recommend if you're going to be using a specific brand that you try to find a matching base coat. That's not entirely necessary though. What you can do is what I did here, which is just use a slightly thicker layer for your initial painting of the nail and make sure that you stick it under the lamp pretty quickly so it doesn't have time to separate. Once I have a single layer of polish on every nail, I go ahead and add another layer 
to every nail but the middle finger. With the middle finger, you want to stick with just one layer at a time because we are going to be adding some wings and some arch. So here I am just layering on that color. I do really like the doughy brand. One thing to note though is that it is thinner in terms of opacity. So it is a sheer gel polish, something that you really do need to build up if you want good coverage. But it is supposed to be like that. It's meant to be buildable and it really self levels nicely. So even if you do go in with a thin coat, you want a sheer coat it's not going to be streaky and it will have nice even color payoff. I go in with a third and final coat of that polish on all the nails except for that one in the middle and finish the base colors. Now I am using my D-Gel painting gels. This is just the white color and I'm going to be adding kind of like a 3D wing effect to the middle finger. It's not 3D in the sense that it's going to stick out from the nail but I lay on a layer of wings, the biggest layer, the back layer, and then I'm going to be painting over that layer with that same sheer color polish so that it looks like it's almost receding into the background, and then painting on another layer of wings in front. You'll see what I mean, but it does create like a nice subtle 3D effect by creating kind of fake depth with this nail. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, um, I'm sure you'll see what I mean here. So when I received the set of polishes, I immediately thought with all of the sparkle that I wanted to do something kind of magical girl themed. I love the kind of like cutesy, kitschy looking magical girl sets. I really want to do one of those in the future, but because this collection was called the Swanky Collection, I figured I would do something like magical girl but make it luxury, make it fancy. After painting over those wings with one layer of that pink sheer polish, I go in with my long leaf gel liner brush and that white paint again, and I just add the veins. You cure that, and then you go over with one more layer of that doughy sheer polish. If you are using something that is a little bit more opaque than this doughy polish, I wouldn't do two layers. I would paint the wings, paint the veins right on top of the wings and then go in with one layer of polish because you still want them to show through. Now I'm adding a second set of wings. You want to place the feathers between all of the feathers in the first layer of wings and you want these feathers to be slightly shorter so that you're not completely covering all of that detail that you've already painted. Here I am adding the veins to those feathers and the painting for this nail is done. So now I am going in with that sparkle polish, that reflective glitter gel, and I'm going to completely paint the thumbnail, the ring finger, and then I'm going to ombre the pointer and the pinky finger. This stuff is quite thick. It is chock full of glitter, so the texture is quite chunky. So you do wanna layer it on and then kind of move around the glitters to make sure it's evenly dispersed. It does ombre very well though, because it is so thick. It is, I would say, mostly glitter held together by like a little bit of polish. So I just take an ombre brush here and really feather that glitter out towards the end. The consistency of it works really nicely with this technique. I had no issues at all getting a really nice even blend. So at this point in the video, um, you all are only about 10 minutes in. I had actually been filming, I think, for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, just because I had to redo some of the feathers of the wings, which I didn't show. Overall, I have seven hours of footage from this one design, just the one hand. So it is definitely my most complicated design, I would say. I use the wire technique for making like resin flowers that was popularized last year by Dreamy Little Nails when she did her Sakura set. So I had wanted to revisit that technique and see what else I could make out of it. That was really my big inspiration for this design. So after base painting all of the nails, I decided I wanted some of that glitter on the middle finger here. So I just laid down a little heart in the center of the wings. I was originally planning on using like a, a crystal, a gemstone, 
but I thought I could pull in that glitter by making my own gemstone of sorts. This does evolve throughout the design, so that's not the final look, but I wanted to get into the wire work. So here's kind of like the tester pieces that I made before doing this. I'm using, I think it's 28 gauge wire. I just got this from Michaels, but my original plan was to do like a, a mirror with some flowers and some petals coming off of it. That didn't work out so well. Um, it was just too much, too complicated. So I settled for a magic wand to go with that magical girl look. I'm starting here with a small piece of wire and making the end of the handle by just bending a little heart. If you don't have wire pliers, then you can just use like fine tipped tweezers like the ones I have here. They work pretty well, but I would strongly recommend if you want to start working with wire that you at least get yourself some wire cutters. Those are really going to be the only things that easily cut through wire without damaging either the wire or your scissors if you try to use scissors. So here I'm just bending the heart more to make it small enough to fit as the end of the handle of the wand. I needed it to be just a little bit smaller, so I'm just using my tweezers and manipulating the wire. I will say if you use too much pressure with this wire, you can rub off some of the gold coating on the outside. So you want to be careful that you're not overworking it too much. Then I'm just grabbing the heart once I like the shape and twisting the ends to create the stem of the wand. I would probably not recommend wearing gloves for this step, um, just because when I was doing the twisting and the manipulating of the wires, I noticed my glove was getting caught in the wire itself and it was making little holes, but that's okay. Next time I just won't wear gloves for this part. Now I am going to create the little leaf offshoots that go at the base of the wand. To help you mold the leaves and stay consistent, you do want a number of cylindrical shapes that you can wrap the wire around. I'm just using a Q-tip that I cut off one end from and a little plastic cuticle pusher for the bigger leaves. This makes it really easy to do loops. You just wrap the wire around, twist the ends, and then slide it off of whatever implement you're using. Then you can take that circle and shape it into whatever shape petal that you would like to make. In this case, I am making little leaves. If you do try this technique, please be patient. This took me a long time to get right when I made the original um, recreation of the Sakura set. I think that took me like 15 hours total to do just the one hand. It is a very finicky process. It's going to take some practice with bending the wire the way you want it and manipulating it to where it looks good. So please be patient with yourselves. I tend to only include footage in a lot of these videos of the final product and not necessarily like the mistakes I've made, but just know that for every nail video, no matter who's making it, there are probably tons of errors in the background that they just don't end up showing. So be patient. Um, this is a really fun technique to learn, but it does take a lot of time. I will say that. So after making a little double leaf here, I am trimming off the excess so that I am just left with those two little leaves that I can attach to the stem. I decided to go ahead and separate all of my finished pieces into like a little charm organizer so I don't lose them. And then I'm taking that wire and wrapping it around just a little moon decal. Now the moon I did not make. This is something that you can purchase off of any sort of retailer that sells nail charms. If I can't find it, you might just look up metal studs and it will give you a variety. You don't have to use a moon. You could probably use a heart or a circle, um, whatever shape. I just went with the moon because it fit that kind of like magical girl theme that I was going for. So I'm wrapping the wire around the long end of the moon, the long edge just to kind of tie in that twisted look that the rest of the wand has with the moon. And now I'm just making the last little leaf offshoot to go at the base of the wand. This time I'm using that slightly bigger cuticle pusher. I love that so many people are borrowing from like resin techniques, jewelry making techniques to improve their nail art. 
I think there are just so many endless options when it comes to nail art right now because of the variety of products that are available, things like 3D gels and whatnot. So I'm really excited to be doing nails right now and see kind of the shift in trends and trying out new things. With the wire method, you realistically can make the frame for any sort of shape so long as you work in small enough parts and combine them to make bigger shapes. I so here I am making the petals for the flower that I decided to add to this design. So I'm using that bigger cuticle pusher again to get bigger petals. I'm elongating these almost like the shape of a lily petal. You could leave them perfectly round, but I like a more oblong shaped petal. And I do this five times, so you need a total of five petals or however many you want for your flower. And now I'm just taking some wire and wrapping it around the stem of the wand just to give it a little bit of extra strength and also to really draw more attention to the kind of twisted nature of that design. You want to wrap it all the way around and cut off any excess at the end. Then I decided since I had this tail anyway, I might as well make the little leaf offshoots from the tail instead of trying to attach it once everything's done. So I just go ahead and quickly make those two leaves by creating the shape, twisting the base to make sure it stays, and then stretching it and molding it to how I want it to look. And here's the finished stem, so there is a little bit of extra sticking out that I just have to trim off. Here I am deciding exactly how I want that moon placed on there because I will have to glue everything together with gel. So I'm just manipulating the leaves to the right position and then cutting off that extra. Now in order to paint the inside of these frames, you do want to create like a clear surface to work on. So I am just using base gel and kind of like when you're blowing bubbles, how the tension of the liquid will fill in the middle of the wand. Same thing with the gel. You just want to use a thick enough layer to where it clings on to all edges and creates that thin layer in the center. Cure that for a good 30 seconds and you are good to go. So I do this to every piece that I've made. And then I figured out it was easier instead of painting it on to create just like a little puddle on a palette and then dip those pieces into the puddle. And here is what I'm wanting my wand to look like. I'm just laying everything out. I would recommend to not use base gel because I was noticing here it was really sticky. It was hard to move the pieces where I wanted them because they were sticking together, so my recommendation is to use a non-wipe top coat for that previous step. And then here I am just adhering all of the little parts to my wand. It's kind of hard to see because these little things are so small and my camera was not as close, I think, as it could have been for the set. But that's okay, you can kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here. If you're going to glue things together on a surface like this, make sure it is a surface that will not stick to gel. So now that my little wand is all put together, I'm going to go in and paint all of the elements. I'm using the Yogurt Nail Bunny Chew Green. I'll link it below. And this is a, I don't know how to pronounce it, I think it's Gao Polish. But they're a really good alternative to a syrup gel, a cheaper option, and I'm just mixing it with a little bit of the Yogurt Nail Korea Gelato Pink to make it a little bit brighter. So I'm painting those little leaves with the green. I'm doing this on the back side so that it almost gives like a stained glass effect where on the front you see the color peeking through but the metal clearly shows. So my recommendation is you paint on the back side I'm adding the pink to the little heart at the end of the wand. And then I can't remember if I end up showing it, but I do just paint the moon white with a milky white. That one is actually from Born Pretty. I'll have that linked below as well. And then I go in and paint all of the little petals. I layer on the color pretty thick here because I want it to show through. I want it to be fairly opaque. 
so I paint each and every petal, curing in between. You want to give it a good cure, make sure that that color is not going anywhere. This is probably one of the more tedious processes in this design, just because you have to put the clear coat on over the metalwork, then you have to paint it to the color you want it to be. Then you actually have to go in and seal everything with another clear coat, this time of a non-wipe top coat to make sure that nothing is tacky. So here I am making the leaves that go with the flower. I had just decided like that one little flower wasn't going to be enough. So I made some longer branches. I don't really know what you would call them, but um, I guess stems and attaching the leaves to the end. I'm using my Jinbi Crazy Standard top coat to then submerge everything into in order to seal in all those colors and make sure I have a non-stick surface. It's really simple. You just dunk these in a clear coat, wipe off any excess, and give them a good cure. This process, I will say, is a little bit satisfying. It's nice to see all of your hard work being finished, and this adds that extra shine to it. So now that I'm ready to attach everything, I'm just wiping all the nails down with alcohol. I use 91% because I want to go in with a clear coat, my top coat, before I attach anything. I always like wiping away the sticky layer just because I don't want that sticky layer to accidentally contaminate a non-wipe top gel and get through and make the whole nail tacky. So I'm using that zombie top gel to cover all of the nails. Even though it is really thick and viscous, self-levels really nicely just like the base gel and gives a perfect glassy layer over the top of the nails. So to affix the charms initially, I am just going to use that same top gel. I have to clip off the excess parts of the little petals here. You want to trim as closely to the edge of the petal as possible. You don't want a lot of wire sticking out. The stem is really just there to give you something to hold onto while you're dipping everything. So when you're making the petals, you want to make sure to clip them last in all of these steps because you need that little handle. So once everything is all trimmed, I just dip one end of the petal into that gel and I flash cure it in place with like a little hand lamp or you could use a flash cure lamp, whatever you have that's portable. And you just want to attach all of the petals into whatever flower shape that you're making, one at a time. This is also a really satisfying process because you get to see all of your hard work coming together. I, however, had attached these before realizing that the flower was a little bit bigger then the wand ended up being, so instead of putting the wand on the thumb finger, which I had originally planned to do, and the flower on the ring finger, I wanted to swap them because the thumb just looked a little bit too empty with just the wand there. So after I do all of this hard work of attaching the petals and all the leaves, trimming down the stems of the leaves to be the right size that I wanted, I ended up deciding to move everything. So yeah, that took some time, but usually my designs, the first time I do one, are always an experiment. I usually end up changing at least one thing, probably more than that. Going into this design, the only thing I had in mind really was that I wanted to make that little wand, and I wanted to do that wing effect. Other than that, all of this kind of was like freestyling it right here and now. So. You make mistakes, but you learn from them. So I pull off the little leaves. I use that same wire cutter to cut off the petals. I sand down that nail tip and I start over. Luckily, the petals were salvageable, so I just had to reattach them to the thumb. And here's that finished nail. Very happy with how this turned out. And now I'm deciding what I want to do with the rest of the nails. I had originally thought I would just leave the little heart in the center of the middle finger, but I wanted to bring some more wire work into this design, so I decided to create just a heart out of the twisted metal. So I go ahead and make a long twisted chain here. 
and then bend it into a heart shape. My original thought was that this would just surround that little heart that I had already painted, but I decided to make it into kind of like its own charm. I didn't love the way it looked there, so I take it off, I sand on that nail, and I get a surprise visit from my cat. <laughs> So he decided to keep me company. I think it was about like four in the morning at this point and he really wanted me to go to bed. So I let him hang out on my lap. That's Smog. He is about two years old and he likes keeping me company while I do nails sometime. So here I have just added a clear coat to that heart charm. And then I paint the inside with that same reflective glitter gel. I actually really like how this turned out. I wasn't sure where I was going with it at the start of the design, but I think it looks nice and it is customizable if you do it this way. I love buying charms, don't get me wrong, and I have way too many of them and I really need to do some like junk nails of sorts, but I also really like being able to customize and do your own thing. So I just seal that together with the top coat, that zombie top coat, and now I'm going to affix everything to the nails. I'm using my trusty Jinbi Crazy Thick, and I'm going to attach the little moon charm, the little moon wand to the ring finger. I give that a cure, and then I'm going to attach that little heart charm to the middle finger. And then if there wasn't already enough in this design, I wanted to add some chrome so I'm just taking a buffing block and I am buffing out the shine of that top coat that we've already put on the nail. I like doing it this way because I find none of the fallout sticks so you really want to make sure you get rid of all of the shine from the top coat for nails you want to add the chrome details to. I'm using the McCart 3D carving gel for the chrome here and this design is very much inspired by NailSue21 on Instagram. I specifically really like this cathedral look that she creates, so I am attempting to recreate it here on this nail, the pointer finger. I am using my long leaf gel liner brush again. It's super, super thin, so I think it's amazing for doing small chrome details. And I'm just laying down the initial lines. I wanna get the framework completed before curing any of this because the thing about chrome powder is you really want to apply it to freshly cured gel. I would only cure for 30 seconds, half of whatever cure time they give you for your non-white top coat, and then apply the chrome pretty quickly after that. If you over cure the gel, then the chrome is not going to stick. So I like to work in stages with chrome. So I'm making sure to get the overall structure down I'm going to cure that for 30 seconds, apply the chrome, and then I can go in and add those smaller details after. So I'm using the Nail Bio Chrome Glitter in Gold. And this is my first time using this chrome glitter. I do really like it. I think it's like a perfect neutral gold shade. It's not too warm toned. It's not too cool toned. I think this might be the last time I used the McCart 3D Carving Gel for chrome though because I was noticing there were some spots where the chrome wasn't exactly sticking, which is a shame because I really like it. It holds its shape very well. And I think maybe if I were doing like bigger areas of chrome, it wouldn't be as bad. But since these are little tiny spots, if any of it is patchy, it does just show pretty easily. So yeah, we'll see. Here I am adding some more detail, some little swirls and like filigree type designs to that middle finger. I did not intend for it to work this way. This one was completely freehanded. I wasn't like looking at any designs or anything, but I do think it almost ends up looking like one of those old school sacred heart tattoos. Um, I actually love tattoos. I only have one myself, but in a different world, um, where I had more money, um, more time, I probably would have more. But yeah, I like how it turned out. So here's me going in and finishing the rest of the chrome detailing on the pointer finger. I add these like little swirls along the lines, the vertical lines. I like the ones I added on the vertical lines and I like how I filled in that center square. I don't really like what I did on the two sides, but that's okay. 
um, for the next go around, I will fix that. But here is me just rubbing that chrome into the middle finger. I'm wiping it away with a makeup sponge. I find that these little triangular disposable makeup sponges pick up the excess chrome the best in my opinion. And then I just wanted to add a little bit more dimension to this middle finger. So I'm painting on some excess chrome details. And then for the pinky finger, I wanted to keep it pretty simple and just do some little filigree. So I'm painting that on and I add some flowers later to tie in that flower on the thumb finger. My rule of thumb when I'm designing is if I do a design element on one finger, it has to be on at least another one, if not two, to kind of bring everything together. Unless the element is like the standout element of a specific nail, like the moon is on the ring finger, or like the wings are on the middle finger. And somehow we've almost made it to the end. So here I am just taking that Jinbi crazy thick top coat and I'm going around all of my charms to make sure they are nice and sealed in and that they won't be going anywhere. So I start with a flower, adding a healthy layer underneath, make sure that if it gets snagged on hair or something it's not going to pull too much by having those tight gaps if there's one thing that really annoys me it's when i have a nail with a lot of charms and it gets snagged on my hair so i always always try to overlay all of my charms and really seal them in with a thick layer of gel that way nothing snags and here i'm just adding some little pearls and caviar beads to the center of the flower just to cover up where everything was attached together and also to give it the look of like the little pollen coming out of the center. And that is the finished thumb. Now for the pointer finger, I wanted to pull those pearls into the design. So I dumped them into my little bead tray. I love this thing. If you don't have one of them, I will link it. You just dump your rhinestones in and then when you give it a shake, those little ridges align them so they are right side up, making them easy to apply. Now I don't have the footage because I was out of frame, but I go in and I add a couple pearls to the little charm here as well at the base of the wand and I seal everything in. I think at this point it was like 4.30 a.m. I was very tired and so I was not really paying attention to whether or not I was in frame. And then the last step is to top coat generously those chrome designs. Now I have a specific top coat that I reserve for chrome work just so that if I do get any glitter in the top coat, I know I'm not going to contaminate another design. I like working with a thinner top coat, so I am using the Beatles top coat for encapsulating my chrome. And you want to start with a really thick layer. That way you're not swiping across the chrome too much and lifting that powder off of where it's already adhered. Start with a thick layer, float it gently over the chrome details, then you can go in, even it out, wipe away some of the excess, but make sure you're starting with a nice thick layer. And believe it or not, that is the last step. Here are the completed nails. I am super, super pleased with how these turned out. I spent so much time on these and I feel like I put my heart and soul into them. So I would love if you shared this video, if you tagged any nail artists you would like to see recreate this look, or if you want to recreate it yourself and tag me in your finished product. I absolutely love seeing other people's work. So yeah, I would love to see what people come up with and I really appreciate it. Here is some b-roll of these nails in the dark. I wanted to make sure to show off the reflective nature of these glitters and they are just so sparkly. This video really does not do it justice. I would probably need a better camera to really capture just how glittery they were. My boyfriend helped me with this footage and he was even surprised. But yeah, overall, really, really happy with how these look. I think the wand and the pointer finger might be my favorite, but let me know which is yours down in the comments below. Thank you so much again to Sweetie Nail Supply for sending me these gels. If you would like to purchase them or any other products, you can use my code to get pressed for 10% off. Thank you everybody for just being here and watching. I love interacting with you all in the comments. I hope you all have wonderful weekends and I will see you next time. Bye.